Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform. Just type in The Religious Hippie and you will find me. So today we're going to be doing something a little different. I kind of wanted to start this Marian Apparition series, and so this is going to be the first video to kickstart that series. Now to kick off this series, I'm going to start with a lesser known Marian Apparition called Our Lady of Shiluva. Some people call it Our Lady of Siluva, and other people call it Our Lady of Shiluva. It's very confusing, a lot of people pronounce it a lot of different ways, but the most common way I found it being pronounced is Our Lady of Shiluva. So we're going to pronounce it like that. Now before we get into the whole story about this Marian apparition, I just wanted to let you guys know that due to college being really difficult right now and the classes just being very hardcore, I might have to go back down to one video per week just due to the demand from all the homework I have to do. It's kind of all up in the air right now, but I'm just giving you guys a heads up. If I go back down to once a week instead of twice a week, it is due to college and I'm just on a really big time crunch. However, things will go back to normal and I'll start posting twice a week again once this class is over and I have basically more free time again. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this video. First, what are Marian apparitions? Marian apparitions are the appearances of Our Lady. These appearances happen when she comes down from heaven to earth to relay a message from God to us. Usually this is warnings, there's a specific message linked to her wanting a church or chapel built there. There can be a bunch of different reasons. Now the Catholic Church is very careful when it comes to approving Marian apparitions. There is tons and tons of research that goes into it. There is sometimes Marian apparitions, they don't become approved for many decades. It, sometimes it can take hundreds of years. It's very crazy, but the point is the Catholic Church is extremely diligent when approving Marian apparitions. And if you would like to learn more about Marian apparitions, I am linking basically like a know-it-all guide to Marian apparitions below, so be sure to go check that out if you're interested. And without further ado, here's the story of Our Lady of Shiluva. Now our story starts in Europe in 1532. During this time, Calvinism and Lutheranism started spreading everywhere in Europe, and no place honestly was safe from this new progressive Christianity. Not even the little town of Shilova in Lithuania was spared from this Protestant Reformation. Now this little town of Shilova was ran mainly by poor farmers, but these were poor farmers who were Catholic and who were extremely devout, specifically to Our Lady. Now when Calvinism came into Europe, as I mentioned in the beginning, they ended up confiscating and seizing Catholic churches, schools, property, and they forbid any type of Catholic meeting. Unfortunately, Shiluva was not exempt from this fate, and their church would be seized and confiscated by Calvinists. However, there was one parish priest who sought to preserve the treasures of the church, and his name was Father John Halupka. He was amazing, and what he ended up doing was he found an ironclad box and inside of it he put vestments, chalices, the deed to the land, and most importantly, a gift given to the church in 1457. It's a painting of Our Lady holding the child Jesus. He took all of these things, me uh, meaning to preserve them, and he buried them by a large stone. Now to an extent, we believe that Father John did this through divine intervention due to the fact that shortly afterwards, the Calvinists came in and seized the property and the Shaluva's Catholic Church. Now once the Calvinists did this, basically what happened is many people ended up converting to this new religion. And in doing so, the whole area of Shiluva ended up converting to Calvinism and it stayed that way for 80 years. The only people who remained faithful Catholics were actually the elders. However, this all changed in the summer of 1608. Now in the summer of 1608, children were on the outskirts of town singing, playing, tending their sheep, doing the things that little kids do best. But then suddenly, a beautiful woman surrounded by a pale light clothed in blue and white garments with long flowing brown hair and a baby in her arms appeared to the children. The woman was weeping, her tears flowing down her cheeks and splashing on the large stone below her on which she stood. 
and then without a word she vanished. Now when the children saw this, children do what they do best and they ran and told their families. One boy actually went to a Calvinist who was a catechist and told him of what happened. The catechist basically told him off and was just like this didn't happen and sent him back to tend to his sheep. But the other children who went to go tell their families eventually convinced some people through their sincerity that this actually happened. Other people were all uh, like obviously skeptics, but for a majority these children ended up rounding a group to go to the large stone to see if this lady would appear again. Many people showed up to the large stone to see if the children were telling the truth. Now the Calvinist pastor, he was afraid that his people were falling for quote, Roman superstition. He told the crowd of people that this was the work of Satan and he turned to leave, but just then, the sound of bitter weeping reached his ears. The Calvinist pastor was horrified at first, but eventually he gained his courage up and he asked the Blessed Mother, why are you weeping? And this is what Our Lady responded with, quote, There was a time when my beloved son was worshipped by my people on this very spot, but now they have given the sacred soil over to the plowman and the tiller and to the grazing animals. And then she vanished. There was an instant conversion back to Catholicism for most of those people. So much so, actually, that 10 years later, 11,000 people received the Eucharist and attended Mass at that very spot, which was on the feast day of the Nativity of the Blessed Mother. Now, eventually, the news of these Marian apparitions reached the ears of a very old man who was actually blind, too. And he was one of the ones that remembered all the church treasures that Father John had buried by this large stone. People took him to the spot, and as soon as he pointed out where the treasures were buried, his blindness was cured instantly. When the ironclad box was dug up and opened, they found that everything was perfectly preserved from the painting to the deed of the land. With the deeds of the property returned, Bishop Valencius petitioned for the church and the property to return back to the Catholics. In 1622, the courts sided with the Catholics, and the Catholics got their church back. The painting of Our Lady holding Jesus is now permanently enshrined at the Basilica of the Birth of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Due to the miracles that were witnessed at Shiluva, the bishops of Lithuania took a lot of time and investigation to make sure that these apparitions were real. And this all came to pass on August 17, 1775. Pope Pius VI made a papal decree authenticating the Marian apparitions that happened at Shiluva. It was authenticated again in 1993 by Pope John Paul II, who went to the Shrine of the Appearance to go pray. This is actually where the rock that Our Lady stood upon, the stone, is kept. People go there and they are able to touch and kiss the stone. Due to all of this, Shiluva was obviously Lithuania's most important shrine and remains so until this day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit out of the ordinary, not something I usually do, but I thought this would be a cool series to start. So let me know if you are excited about this series. I have tons more coming, and I think this will just be a great way to get to know Our Lady and just in general learn about her because I think that's super important. If you would like a book on Marian apparitions, you can buy the book See How She Loves Us, which has 50 approved Marian apparitions and the stories behind them. I've read this book and it's what's given me inspiration to start this series, so hopefully you guys will buy it too and enjoy it just as much as I have. With all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!